Welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast, where we help you to explore your capacity to move better, push further, and achieve your limitless potential through fitness, nutrition, recovery, and lifestyle. Hey guys, welcome to the Pharos Fit Podcast. Good to be back with you guys again. I'm here with Brandon, my producer. Hey Brandon, how you doing? Good. How's it going, Pete? Good, my man. What's up? What's happening? Oh, not much. Good to be back in LA. Been running back and forth to Riverside, but uh, besides that, man, life's good. Trying to figure out how to get around these Gavin Newsom uh, Thanksgiving celebrations. You can only have X amount of people. I feel like I'm you now, and I can only have X amount of people yeah. at my house for the holidays. You're going to have to exclude some people. I mean, that's the best part. You know, those people yeah. you don't want to the, invite. The, the relatives that you really just don't uh, want there. Like, like, sorry. sorry. Like, <laughs> it's not our fault. You can, you can blame everything on Newsom. It's great. The one, the one good thing about the, <laughs> the lockdown. <laughs> okay, guys. So today, um, I wanted to talk about uh, training actors, and I want to kind of start by saying what this, what I don't want this to be about. This isn't um, about like any kind of celebrity training claim, or um, I, I hate the term celebrity trainer. Um, I don't claim to be one. I would never wish to be described as one, and. Um, yeah, it's one something I really just want to stay clear of. So this is really a podcast for people who are either going to be training actors or maybe training actors at some point in their career or maybe for actors or actresses who um, may be looking for a trainer and, you know, kind of what they should be looking for. And I just want it to be kind of a helpful podcast really about uh, things to look out for, um, things that might be helpful, things that... Um, could be pitfalls um and, and this is as much about things that i've learned because of things i got wrong than it is about things that i've done right so i want it to kind of be a well-rounded um well-rounded uh podcast on things to look out for things that may be helpful things um things that can kind of disrupt your 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 training you know your ideal training program for for someone in, in this position and uh and just general stuff about about the uh the training of an actor in general um and i wanted to start with the, the first point is 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 quite simply what is the brief um and you have to be very very clear about what the brief is from the outset what the expectation is now sometimes this brief might come from a studio and sometimes it might come from the actor or the actress so the first the first point is to really note down what the, what the true brief is um, what the expectations are, and then you start designing the road to fulfill that expectation. Now, the brief may be, you know, this person needs to lose 20 pounds, this person needs to gain 20 pounds, this person needs to be fit enough to be able to do this this work, um, they need to be uh, mo mobile enough to do this kind of work, they need to put on, you know, 10 pounds of muscle, whatever it is, you know, make sure you're clear about what your job is and what the brief is because you can't go in with this is the way that I train people because if that isn't the brief then <laughs> you've already fucked up <laughs> so make sure you know what your job is what you're there to do um, and then d devise the plan around the brief do not devise the plan around your preconceived uh, notions of what a training program looks like or what your training program looks like so listen to the brief and then act accordingly, which leads into the second point of how much time do you have and what is realistic? Now, obviously, if you're giving given a year with an actor or an actress, it's a different uh, protocol than if you're given three months with an actress. The expectations change, the reality changes. You know, if you're given a good amount of time with a person, you can really design a, a program long term. And I, I will give you an example. So let's say... Um, Let's say you're trying to, to 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 the end result is I, I want someone to be muscular and lean for a project. Now, let's say you're taking someone who doesn't have much of a training history; they're kind of new to this this sort of thing. And I'll, I'll give you an example. Um, take take the cast of of a Wonder Woman, where you know we had a lot of a lot of girls coming in who were um, dan had a dancing background. Um, so they were fit, uh, they had fitness experience and obviously their mobility was great, but they hadn't had much experience in, in, in the ways of, you know, gaining muscle, uh, putting on weight and that kind of thing. Now, when you, when you gain muscle and when you, you put on weight, obviously, um, 
that can come with a, a, an increase in body fat percentage in the short term. So if you have a long enough time frame, you could design a program where you you build them up and then trim them trim them back down again. So if I have, you know, if I have six months, seven months, eight months, then I can afford to spend some time adding mass, adding muscle, gaining a little bit of body fat, um, and not being overly worried about the fact that that's happening because I know I've got time on the back end to then trim them down. Mm -hmm. um, I can manipulate nutrition. I can nip, manipulate training protocols um, to get them back to where they need to be. If you have two months, six weeks, three months, whatever it is, you don't have time to do that. You don't have time to build them up and then bring them back down again. Mm. You basically, you're going to have to do a different kind of a program relative to the time that you are given. You know, in that instance, you can't build them up and, and break them back down again. You're going to have to do a, a more, you know, a more um, varied circuit type program to try and gain as much lean muscle tissue whilst maintaining a low body fat percentage as you can. Mm -hmm. Now, the end result, of course, will likely not be as effective. You can't expect it to be as effective because you don't have as much time, but you can still do a pretty good job um, with a shorter time frame if if you are careful with uh, the nutritional program and the um, and the training protocols in, in the time frame you have. So now, in the, in the scenario of this Wonder Woman, <clears throat> What would be the difference between the six month and two month in terms of dieting? If you had to say, so, like, what yeah. are you trying to hit on people? Or the so if you that? have that kind of, a, if you have a longer time of frame, like, like we did with that original Wonder Woman cast, then in the beginning, they need to, um, they need to have a, a positive caloric intake. So they need to be consuming more, more calories than they're uh, burning. So, you know, you're going to make sure that their macronutrients um, are on point uh, and, um, and culminate in a greater caloric amount than the amount they're burning on a daily basis. So let's say they're burning, you know, 2,200 calories a day. I'm going to make sure they're getting 2,600 calories a day, 2,700 calories a day, maybe 2,800 calories a day to make sure they're in a positive caloric balance so that then they can gain the muscle tissue they need um, to, uh, yeah, to, in to increase muscle and, and increase size. Um and then, you know, we'll hold them at that. We'll, we'll keep that weight going, going for as long as we feel we can before we then have to, you know, reverse it and go into a caloric deficit, uh, probably reduce glycogen uh, and bring that total caloric number down in, in which uh, for the purpose of losing fat, uh, losing body fat, and then revealing the muscle that we've built. Because... Really and truly, when when you do a program like that, and you and you do gain muscle in that way with a you know um, with a positive caloric balance, the likelihood is always that your that that muscle gain is going to come with a little bit of body fat. It's unavoidable. So you kind of build them up, hold it, and then when it's when it's crunch time, it's okay. Now we're going to cut, and we're going to reduce the uh, reduce the calories, train the uh, change the training protocols slightly, and now emphasize. Uh, burning fat so the way that we would do it is you know like i said usually the protein always stays the same it's it's the glycogen and, and the fat and the carbohydrates and the fat that, that usually changes so mm. when, they're, when they're kind of building up for a period of time the glycogen is going to go up the carbohydrate intake is going to go up um, and then once we start trimming down the glycogen usually comes down <laughs> And by virtue of that, of course, the calories come down. Uh, maybe the body fat, can, uh, the uh, the fat consumption might go up a little bit to compensate. But um, you know, it's the manipulation of those two training knobs, the, those two nutritional training knobs, the the, the carbohydrates, the carbohydrates and the fat that usually change. Gotcha. So probably excess carbohydrates in the be uh, beginning to to build up, and then restrictive carbohydrates on the back end to trim them back down again. Are you limiting to zero to no sugar at all at that point, or I mean? When you pull down, or how much? Yeah, it, it depends on the person. It can, it can change from person to person. It's 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 um everybody's having some glycogen always, yeah. um, because you're still obviously training and you still have to have energy to do what you need to be able to do. Um, but the reason why it was so successful um, at that time was you know everybody everybody stuck to the game plan. Everybody did what they were asked to do in terms of I mean. They did a great job of like sticking to the macros that they prescribed at, at the right times, and then, uh, and then uh, w w when it uh, when it came time to switch, like 
understanding what they had to do, like comprehending what what the what the game plan was, and then executing it, you know, at the right time for mm-hmm. what, for what was needed. Um, and I think a lot of that was, you know, it, it's a really interesting journey for some people, especially if you come from a background where you've been told your whole life to like restrict calories and to be skinnier and all that kind of stuff. And for us, it was more of a, it was, it was, it was a fun, it was a fun game to play to actually put on weight and, and, and gain and understand that if you train in a certain way and you eat a certain way, the weight that you gain is, you know, you're building strength, you're building muscle and all that kind of stuff. And it's no longer a negative thing. It's a positive thing. Mm-hmm. But then playing the numbers game of like, and now what you do is you change this way and you can, can lose the fat. So it's, it was kind of, an, I think it was an interesting game for everyone to play, but it's, it's a good lesson for everyone to learn in, in, you know, uh, positive caloric balance versus negative caloric balance and, and what the difference is and how you can manipulate the variables to achieve a certain look. Mm. Um, so, yeah, and then obviously, like I said, with the, with the shorter term thing, if you're only given a short amount of time, you just haven't got time to go up and come down again. So you just have to kind of like do whatever you can in the time frame. Uh, like I said, and that usually is going to be a combination of uh, lifting and interval training and cardio with a kind of um, a, a more balanced uh, caloric intake uh, and a more um, less less glycogen in in the in the in the time frame you have because like I said you can't afford to put on too much body fat because you haven't got time to come back down again so you have to be a bit more careful in the, in the short term. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, it will go back to the brief like what is the most important thing here? What's the most important th- what's the most important way I can con- contribute towards this this product? And how can I how can I um, what can I prescribe? And how can I behave that will um, that will produce the best result possible? Um, so yeah, it's 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 just a, it's just a different way of approaching it. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, we would all like more time, um, and the, I'm sure you've, we've all heard stories about you know actors that were thrown in at the last minute and only had like six weeks to train for a role and stuff, and they did what they can. Um, I, I remember actually reading a story about uh, Hugh Jackman in the first Wolverine. He he didn't have much time for the first one. Mm. I think he was thrown in maybe two months before filming or something. And, um, you know, if you go back and look at his physique in that original movie, it's completely different for the, the subsequent Wolverines where he had plenty of time to train for. Or he was that shredded. Yeah, I he mean... got shredded in, 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 in the subsequent films because he simply had more time and he had, um, you know, he could be, you know... Uh, a lot uh, he could plan the the situation a lot better and really um and really do what he needed to do to to to, to present the best physique possible mm. so that's a, that's a good lesson in in, in time really yeah the Obviously. interesting one is uh christian bale whenever he goes from from the mechanic to batman right uh, that one's all on him but you know um <laughs> right yeah in terms of you go all the way back down and all the way back up but he's yeah a, he's a lunatic so i was actually listening to a, the Matthew McConaughey podcast the other day um, with uh, Joe Rogan and he was talking yeah. about um, when he went from uh, Dallas Buyers Club um, which he lost a, a ton of weight for and I think it took him I think he said he's still to this day like fighting the you know the the aftermath of, of you know metabolically what happened to his body because he lost so much weight and then tried to get back up again and you know when you do that to your body and you're that restricted with your body and you, you kind of like you malnourish it in that way it can be a it can be a, a, a tough road back so, yeah it's tough for the body to find a way to ever want to gain that much right or put that much more on and it's it's it is it's it's another lesson to learn it's it's a um, you know you have to be careful when you do this kind of thing because it can it can screw people up if you're not careful if you're too restrictive if you're too low calorie for too long if you're um you know, if you malnourish someone for a, for a long period of time, it can have a long-lasting effect. So, you you know, you do have to be careful with this stuff. Um, uh, the next point um, I kind of want to go into is uh, personality. Um, because obviously when you when you train people, and I, I've trained, you know, a number of actors who, who have different personalities, and your program and the way that you train people has to change relative to the person that you're training. You know, some some people you can take on more of a kind of sergeant major approach and be mm-hmm. a little bit more kind of military style. With the other people, you have to be a little bit softer and you have to deliver the message in a little little bit of a softer way. You have some people who have a shorter attention span and they can't. You know, if your if your if your training program for the day is not devised in such a way that suits their personality, 
it won't work because they 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 can't function in that way. You have to adapt the way that you train someone relative to their personality. So if they if they have a shorter attention span, then I find like shorter sets, shorter circuits are more effective than if you have like ten rounds of this, that, and the other. Now I have other people who respond very well to that kind of thing. I mean, I'm one of those people. You tell me to do 10 rounds of this, that, and the other, and I'll do it all day long. That's it. I like that kind of like long grinding, yeah. kind of like simple stuff. Other people I train, it would drive them nuts. It's like, you want me to do this for 10 rounds? There's no fucking way. They just won't do it. Um, or they'll just do it so badly that it will lose all, you know, lose all purpose. So you have to consider the personality of the person and what's going to suit, you know, their personality and what's going to be right for them. Mm-hmm. What is right for one person is not right for another and it's it's hard because it kind of takes you out of sports science and it's no longer about well i know this works well that's great but this works for you or it works like scientifically but it might not necessarily work for the personality of the person which is a which is a different thing which is an emotional thing and a um you know a harder thing really to to prescribe or to i mean sometimes you have to spend a, a, a good amount of time with that person to really understand what's going to be effective for them and what you can and cannot prescribe or what you can and cannot expect out of that person. Mm -hmm. Um, So, you know, it's, 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 it it is tricky. Um, And and also a lot of it comes down to what that person is going to be willing to do and what they are willing to sacrifice. Now, some actors and actresses will get a role and they'll be like, I'm, I'm willing to do anything for this role. And, you know, like we just talked about like McConaughey for, um, Dallas Buyers Club mm. or Christian Bell that you mentioned, you know, they're willing to go to extremes to to give the, the, the to present the physicality that, that they're looking for. You have other you have other people that are just simply not going to do that. They're not willing to go to those extremes. And again, this, this will come down to, to to personality. Like, what are you willing to do um, in order to 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 present the kind of character that you want to present? And and again, this is something that. I wish I had done on occasion is sit down with the person in the beginning and say, okay, this is what the studio are telling me. What do you think? Like, what are you willing to do? What are you prepared to do? How much does this mean to you? And what are you willing to sacrifice? Because once you get that down and once you write that down and you can show it to them later, like you can almost present it as, well, this is what you said you were willing to do. So I'm just telling you, this is what it's going to take. Because at that point, then you have like an understanding between you of you told me you wanted this and this is what we have to do. Therefore, you know, you either accept that or we just accept that you're not willing to go that far and we draw a line under it. And that's fine too. But, you know, if you're asking this of me, you have to allow me to do my job. Um, otherwise, let's make a different plan. Gotcha. Um, and again, it's, it's it's a personality thing. It's It's them being honest with you and you being honest with them. And of course... You know, honesty is a hard, it's a hard, what's the word? Um, honesty is a hard currency <laughs> in Hollywood because, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a game of make-believe. You know, it's, it's a world of make-believe. Um, but it's, it's worth, you know, that, that kind of like contract between you and a client of like, okay, because you're the team. Like the studio can say one thing, their friends can say something, your background saying that thing. The contract is between you and them of like, okay, What's our plan here? What do we want to do? And it's better to sit down in the beginning and really like, you know, put down on paper what our expectations are together. What what are we agreeing here? What what are, what are our expectations and what are we willing to do? Just so you don't waste time down the line, getting in each other's way and like being disappointed in each other. So it's it's better to kind of lay it out from the beginning. Um, you know, I I often think it's better to almost have like. A, a written down contract of <laughs> 10 points of like you are agreeing to the following ba 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 that's just so with you not even with the studio just, just like, with uh, you like yeah. this is between me and you and this is what we are agreeing and write down those things in the beginning I'm expecting you to do this I'm not expecting you to do that but I'm expecting you to do this and just write it down like a like a 10 point contract because like I said it's better that you lay it all down in the beginning so that you're not you know like disappointed in each other later on um, next thing it's not about you. Um, now, this 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 sounds obvious, but it isn't obvious because we all have ego. Ego always gets in the way, um, 
And I think, you know, sometimes, and it's, again, it goes back to the brief and it goes back to expectation and that kind of thing. You have a way that you like to train and you want to like show the world that you're the best trainer on the planet and you're capable of doing this great job and all that kind of thing. But at the end of the day, this is not about you. It's about the, it's about the client. It's about the actor. It's about the actress. It's about, it's about them. It's about what, it's about what really it's about what they want and what they're capable of. Um, and you know, we have a thing at the gym where we say you have to meet people where they're at. Mm. It's the same thing. If you get like an actor or an actress, you have to meet them where they're at. Um, you can't, you can't i mean if you have like a long training history like me you you can't go in too hard and be like gun ho and like it's going to be a 90 minute workout we're going to do you know a 60 minute crossfit workout and then we're going to do some bodybuilding and then it's just it's just not applicable and it's not it's not going to be it's not going to be received in the way that you want it to be received now you may come across people that you know are capable of more mm. um and you know it can fulfill you know your ideal program um but you know the chances of that are, are fairly slim and again it goes back it goes back to it making sure that you're not thinking about yourself you're thinking about the person in front of you and what what their needs are right now because you have to remember most of the time you know these people are under a lot of pressure themselves you know they've got their own insecurities and their own problems and they're dealing with a lot of other stuff and training really for them you know and you'll know this after you sit down for your initial like consultation we were just talking about like this this may not be the be all and end all for them this may just be like look i really just want to like you know i i'm fine with just being in decent shape i'm, I'm not i don't want to like give up three hours of my day to do this which is fine but like i said you need to like you know set that out from the beginning um if you go in like well i'm the best trainer in the world and i've devised the best program in the world and this is what you have to do and if we don't do it like i'm not doing my job like if you go in like that again it's it's not going to be well received and it's gonna it's gonna cause tensions and, and problems and you'll probably get fired. So um, it's better to better to make sure like check yourself every day and, and understand that you know you are a tiny part in this puzzle and you're a tiny part in their lives and in this in this production whatever it is your role is small you're relatively insignificant so you know check your ego leave your ego at the door um, leave your ego for your own training and. Make sure their training's about about them uh, and what what they need at that time. So meet them where they're at. Um, next point I had down was was kind of like nutrition, uh, sleep, and schedule. Now the nutrition we kind of like touched on already. Um, I find you have to remember often with an actor and actress's schedule. You know it depends whether you're training them like. Whether this is like a general training for an actor and actress or they're in production, they're rehearsing, they're performing, they have all this, stuff, all this other stuff going on. Nutritionally, it can be very hard to get them the food that they need when they need it. Mm -hmm. So historically, I've often used um, a food prep service where you know you tell the, the, the food service that the calories they need, the macros they need, and it's just delivered and it's easy and it's like all that kind of stuff. Like... The, the likelihood of you giving an actor an actress like a bunch of calories and a bunch of macros and saying this is what you need to do doesn't work that way <laughs> the chances of them ever doing it are slim to none um so either you have to have i mean sometimes there's there'll be an on production chef who'll like design it in in the way that you in the way that you want but more times than not like i've just used meal prep service to say okay i have this person this is what I want them to eat. These are the calories. These are the macros. Can you deliver it? You know, every day, fresh, that kind of stuff. Um, and it will give them what they need. And usually that's kind of been the best way around it. Um, the problem with that always is long term. It gets very samey, very dull. Yeah, um, it's tedious for them too when they don't have something fresh yes, or so, something you knew, unique. It's like, oh, this is what we're eating today. It's just, oh, yeah. it's chicken and broccoli. Right. Ugh. So again, I think when you design these things and when you use these things, you have to be realistic of the situation um, and design something where 
I understand that you're going to have to give them a break at some point. You can't say, okay, seven days a week, you need to eat exact, exactly this. That's it. That's the end game. Like, it's just not going to work. They're going to rebel. They're going to say, fuck you. They're going to drink a bottle of wine and they're going to do whatever the fuck they want. So you have to find some kind of balance with like, okay, like five times a week, like we have to kind of do this. Otherwise, you're not going to get what you want. But then, you know, at the weekends, I just want you to be careful. You know, but I want you to like have a meal here, have a meal there, like enjoy yourself a bit. But you know, just just be, you know, you just have to be realistic with the situation. If if you if you if you're too restrictive, especially if this is a long, a long curve, especially if you're doing this for eight months, mm-hmm. like you can't expect someone to eat out of a Tupperware box for eight eight, eight months. It's just not going to work. You know, I, I I get it, and I know that if you're a professional bodybuilder and you listen to this, it's like, well, I do that all the time. Well, <laughs> you're a, prof- a pres- professional bodybuilder, and that's that's your life. But actors and actresses aren't professional bodybuilders, and they're not. Fitness is not their job. You know, this is something they're doing for a role. And, <coughs> you know, it's, it's, it's too much of an expectation and an unreal expect, unrealistic expectation that they're going to be able to be that strict for that long. So you have to find a balance there. Like, this is what we kind of have to do, but I'm allowing you this, I'm allowing you that, and, and work out some kind of deal that you think is going to work for, the, for this person's personality type. Yeah. Um, With that balance thing, I mean, the recovery has got to be interesting because I just know as myself getting older, like how much more important each sleep, not going out, having a drink or several right. drinks. And that's, and that's my next point. You know, the, the sleep and the schedule thing. Chances are, you know, a lot of time um, sleep will not be your friend, even though we all know the more sleep you get, the leaner you will be and the more muscle you will build because that's when you release testosterone. That's when you release growth hormone. That's when you recover. So the more sleep you can get, the better. Um, and I, I, th- there has been instances where you can get someone to sleep nine or ten hours a night, but the reality the reality is, it's just not going to happen in the way that you want it to happen. Um, so sleep may be maybe less than you want, which means you have to kind of change training protocols sometimes to to account for the fact that they haven't had much sleep. Um, schedules can be long, filming days can be long, um, uh, recovery will be um minimal so again you have to prescribe you have to to write programs and 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 design protocols that are gonna fit with the sleeping patterns and the the complex schedule of a shoot or rehearsals or you know or, or whatever it is um if someone's on set for 10 hours and you know they've had restrictive food and then you try and hammer them with like 90 minutes of intensive training again it's not going to work in your favor. You're going to end up in a catabolic situation instead of an anabolic situation, which you just don't want. So be very aware of how much sleep is this person getting? How much work is this person doing? How much can I expect of them relative to the schedule that they have? Mm-hmm. Because again, in a, if you're a good coach and a good trainer, you, you know what the ideal program is, what the best option would be. If, if all your, all the chips were in your favor, but usually the chips are not in your favor. So you have to then adapt to the situation at hand um, and, and, and change. And again, you know, that's that's something you have to look at deeply and it's, it, it's, it, it's going to be um, a relationship between you and the person and them being honest with you and you being honest with them and them saying, look, I was up till 3 a.m. I was drinking like... I don't know what to tell you. This is the way it got like, and then it's like, okay, that's all right. We'll just adapt. We'll just change and we'll, um, we'll find a way. Um, but you have to, you have to take the situation for what it is and not the situation that you want it to be. Um, because again, ultimately it'll work against you if you don't listen Mm -hmm. and if you don't realize what's happening. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a energy. Energy is, is the real word that we're talking about here. Like, how much energy can we expect the person to have relative to everything else they got going on? Because sometimes they've got shooting, they've got makeup, they've got hair, they've got rehearsals, they've got a function they need to go to, all this other stuff. And then, like I said, your role in their day is a small role. You're not important in the day, but you, you have to find, you have to think to yourself, how have what's the most effective thing that I can do right now for this person? How can I help this person right now? Not how can I fuck this person up as much as possible in the time that I got, 
but how much can I help them in the in the in the, in the time I have relative to the energy that they have? Mm-hmm. So it's some it's it, you know it's I, I think it, we when you when you first get the call for a for a for an acting or an acting job, you think it's going to be the best fucking job in the world, and you're like, oh my god, this is like the be all and end all. This is everything I ever wanted to do. Like, and then once it starts, it's like, oh, this is different from what I thought it was going to be. I thought I, 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 you know, when I first got the jobs, I was like, I'd write the program out. And I was like, oh, we're going to do this, and then we're going to do that, and then we're going to do this. And it's going to be this beautiful, like, perfect program. And then, of course, the project starts. And it's like, oh fuck, <laughs> this isn't going to work. <laughs> like, so you kind of have to think on your feet of like, okay, what's what's realistic now, and and change tax. And then again, that will change as you go. So let's say you get someone. You get an actor and actress like before before the film even starts. Like say say you get someone three months in the beginning. Like you you got time then you can do more stuff. But once production starts and time is a limited resource, you got to you got to change everything and you got to you got to think about okay. The reality has now changed. What's the best thing that I can do for this person right now? Mm-hmm. You know. Uh, another thing, j- just kind of on this, you know repair type um, idea is making sure um, that there's there's massage and there's restorative practice practices in there uh, especially if it's kind of like an action type movie uh, or, or or series or whatever it is because if you're training someone hard and then they're on set all day on their feet and then they're in action scenes and all that kind of stuff making sure they've got some restorative practices in there like massage um, is important because again their bodies are going to get like pretty pretty broken down mm-hmm. um so making sure that they're taking care of themselves on the the other end of things is is also important um obviously like i said sleep is ideal but um sometimes it doesn't happen the way you want it to so having like a sports masseuse that you can rely on that you trust um is is, is a great idea um just to you know at a certain point it could become like a longevity game like how long can we keep this pe- person going before their body just just gives up on them yeah. so you know you've got to have as many restorative practices in there as you as you can um and have you been a part of the um, the training during production as well oh yeah and was yeah. that for example like wonder woman did you do that where you were on set yeah and with that was that here in california or was that somewhere else? no that was um some of it was in in Leavesden and uh, just outside london in watford and some of it was in italy Sweet and yeah, and then then really at that point, like once once production really k- yeah, kicks off, like time really time really is short. Like there's only so much you can do by that point. The job basically obviously has to be done by that point, and then you're just trying to maintain whatever you've built. You're trying to like get them a little bit pumped up before they go in for their scene, um, and you're trying to keep them like obviously uh, nutritionally trying to keep them on the ball, and trying to do whatever you can to to keep the the body composition where it needs to be. But like I said, your that the, the time that you have and the energy that they have is going to be extremely limited. So be very careful about what you think is going to happen, um, as opposed to what is actually going to happen. Because you know, it's like I said, it's not going to work out the way that you think it's going to work out. And as a trainer, that's got to be meaning you're just on call, like just hey, basically, when is going to shoot finishes? You got to yeah. be ready. Go train this person, that person. Yeah, you're on you're on call and you have to listen to them you have to say okay how are you feeling again it's not about you it's not about what you want to do it's not about what program you you've been working on that you think works it's really going to be about okay how are you feeling how much energy have you got you know what's the best use of our time right now um, and how can i help you um as opposed to like like i said now i'm gonna fucking you've been on sale day and i'm gonna fucking destroy you for an hour because that's what i do because that's the kind of trainer that i am like, <laughs> well it seems like it's gonna be tough for the trainer as well i mean you gotta be in a good mentality to just be ready right. to go and like you said leave that ego at the door yeah because they're already coming in on yeah. shoot on set for 16 hours yeah. now they gotta train with you they got only seven and a half more hours in the day or seven hours to eat go to sleep rest recover yeah and i think also like it can be like what's the best way to say this so if someone's they've been up early they've been on set all day and you're their trainer and all you've had to do all day is train them they're going to come to that session we're like well fuck you like i've been working all day you've been done doing all, all you've got to do is train me I, I don't have the like i don't have the capacity to do what you're asking me to do 
and you're like, well, I'm a trainer and I like prepared this program and it's like, it doesn't matter. Like, like I said, you have to listen to them. You have to be prepared to change your attitude and your, you know, your ideals, your ideal program to suit their needs at that time. And, and then, and their needs will change, you know, as, as schedules change. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think that's kind of the biggest lesson I learned in the beginning was, you know, changing your expectations of what's going to be possible, changing your, um, being less kind of like, this is the program for today as to like listening to them and thinking, okay, I I understand this is what we're going to do today because I understand the situation you're in. I understand the position you're in and just be more understanding with it from their perspective. Um, you know, your, your, your program is less important than their sanity <laughs> and their, you know, you know, their health, basically, mm-hmm. both mentally and, and physically. So, you, you know, you have to listen. Um, the next point I kind of want to draw on is I, I just wrote down kind of dealing with nonsense because there is a lot of nonsense, obviously, and this may or may not happen to you. Um, but if you are dealing with any kind of media stuff or people are interviewing you or asking for, oh, how did this person train for this role or that? Whatever you say doesn't really matter. Like the only thing they care about is the thing that fits their narrative. So you can say they did this, they did that, they did this. The only thing they will take out of whatever you said is whatever fits their narrative. Um you know, I, I've done this numerous times and it's never worked out the way that I, I hoped it would work out. You know, they've taken bits, they've left out other bits. It's made it look one way, it's made it look the other way. It's made it look like I've made claims I didn't make. And it's, um, you know, it, it again, it, it, ends, it, ends, it ends with you being disappointed. So you have to be very careful about what you say, who you're saying saying it to, and understanding that papers and magazines have a narrative that that they they that they're trying to fit this into. So your truth doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what they want you to say, and not what you actually, not the point you're actually trying to make. So completely, I've, I've experienced this as an athlete where you just yeah. had an hour and a half interview, and there's a segment in the newspaper this big. Basketball is fun. You're just like whoa. Yeah, I sound like an idiot. Like, yeah, there was so much more we talked about. What do you guys do? Right, and that's that's you. You can, you know, I've I've taken the time sometimes to say these like long, eloquent like things about training and stuff, and they fucking write one sentence which is nothing like the point I was trying to get across. Mm. So, you know, again, just just watch your expectations, decide whether or not you even want to do the interview, <laughs> depending on who it is, and then you know. Proceed with caution, shall we say? Proceed mm-hmm. with caution, because, okay. like I said, it, it really turns out the way that, the way that you want it uh, to turn out. So, yeah, be careful. Uh, the next point, um, kind of an an overall over, overarching thing is is the dynamics of of the job and not making it personal. Remember that you are there in a professional capacity. You are a tiny part in a, in a, you're a tiny cog in a big wheel and you are relatively not important on, on, on the scale of things. So I think sometimes there's, and again, I guess it comes from media, like so-and-so was the trainer on this and then you go into a job saying, well, I'm going to be the trainer on this and I'm important and it's probably going to be the best thing that ever happened to me and this is going to be the pinnacle of my career and all that kind of stuff and then you get all like again it's ego and you get all blown up about what it's going to be and how it's going to affect your life and that you're going to be this huge success and that this thing is going to be the thing that makes me successful it's not it won't you are not important you are again a tiny cog in a big wheel and your your role really is to listen to the person in front of you and do the best job that you can for them and to help them as much as possible. You have your brief, you have your knowledge, and you have your experience, and you're going to apply that to the person in front of you in the best way that you can. It will not be ideal. It will not be perfect. You're going to do the best job possible, but it's not going to be about you. It's going to be about them. 
I know it sounds obvious, but you know, I've seen it a million times. Often a trainer's ego can get in the way of the job that they're doing. Um, and they can take the emphasis, you know, off the person in front of them and make it about make it about them. No, which, completely. I, I mean, I can see right through that what you're trying to say. It's like you know, you're going out to do a job, but you can't let you going out doing this job can dictate the good or bad that's going to come from it because of all the like all the different variables that are going to get thrown to the system or thrown into whatever could happen. And you right. sometimes you get overdrawn. Like, wait, I'm supposed to do this. This is my job. And then, well, you're completely missing the point now. Your ego got yeah. way, way wrapped up. In I, I think, um, you know, for me, it, it, <laughs> my dream, when I was when I first became a coach, my dream was, oh my God, wouldn't it be great to work in the movies? Wouldn't it be less like the dream job to like train an actor or train an actress or train a bunch of actors or a bunch of actresses for the movie? Wouldn't that be the best job in the world? So you're going into the job thinking, this is going to be the best job in the world. And of course, you go in with that attitude and then it hits you like a ton of bricks. It's like, oh my God, this is not what I thought it was going to be. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of great stuff and I had a great time and I met some great people and I'm super grateful and super thankful for it. Um, and the people that I work with now, like I love and I, I you know, I, you know, I, I feel super grateful that I, that I, that I get to do that. But it is not what you think it's going to be and it will not turn out the way that you think it, it, it will and um if you go in with that expectation you are going to be disappointed about you know what it what it truly is Mm -hmm. um like i said at the end of the day uh hollywood is um it's a game of make-believe it's it's all it's all fake really um so don't go in thinking this is my chance to prove to the world that I am the best trainer on the planet and I'm going to get the best results and it's going to be phenomenal and everyone's going to think I'm awesome. <laughs> it's, <laughs> wrong it's industry. Not gonna, in the wrong industry, it's not going to work out <laughs> that, that way. So, you know, go in with a sense of reality. It's going to be hard. It's going to be, it's going to take a lot of thought. It's going to take, it's going to take a lot of like negotiation between, between you and your client, between you and the actor, between you and the actress to really like, meet them where they're at, understand, you know, what they really need, who they really are, and um, how you can provide the best service possible. You know, and a lot of that will be, you know, your experience, your knowledge, your awareness, your understanding, and apply it to that person in the situation they're in. Um, so, yeah, again, it's one, it's, it's something you have to, there's a lot of variables that you have to take into consideration before you even put pen to paper on the program and know that whatever program you write down is going to change a hundred times before the job is done. So be adaptable, be understanding, be humble, um, be helpful, um, and be as honest as you can be in a dishonest (laughs) industry. (laughs) (laughs) if you know what I mean that's good Um, okay guys that about wraps it up Um, let us know if you have any questions on this stuff like I'm happy to talk about it Um, I'm happy to like share with you guys anything that might be helpful Um, you can uh, follow us at uh, Faris Echo Park Um, please feel free to share this podcast and to like Um, as always it's very helpful for us and drop by and see us for 1316 Glendale Boulevard we're still in lockdown, obviously, Brendan, but um, we are working out outside. We have a, a couple of gyms outside, which we've, which we've set up, which we, we put out every day. We bring home every day, so it's there for you. Um, we're here to provide a service to you guys, and um, we'd love to see you here. So take care out there. I hope you're all well, and look forward to catching you soon. Thanks, Brendan. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys.